This is coming from a player who has a 10 plus KD in the game. You don't need a godlike aim to be good at PvP in Tarkov. What it actually boils down to is A lot of time, PvP in Tarkov is like a game of tic-tac-toe. If you play your turns right, you will never lose. Well, mostly. Let's look at how we play this game of tic-tac-toe in Tarkov. Fight can be lost before it even begins. In this chapter, we are going to fix the biggest mistake most of you guys make almost every raid unknowingly. And that is not understanding the importance of preparation. Tarkov is a lot like the movies. You're just an ordinary guy against a group of bad guys. And your only advantage is preparation. So what do you do? You prepare smart. And that is exactly what I'm going to teach you first. It is extremely important to decide the map and objective of your raid before you start building your kit. For example, say if you have a quest to kill 5 PMCs in Dom, then a gun which has a shorter barrel length would be more suited to your requirements because it allows you to peek through the doorway easily compared to a longer weapon. One of the stats of bullet that many of us totally ignore but is extremely important is bullet velocity. It is more important on maps which have long distance engagements because high bullet velocity means bullet drop will be less, meaning easier to shoot targets far away. Also, it will be easier to shoot moving targets as you don't have to lead your aim by a lot. On close range maps, you don't really have to worry about this at all. Now you can't do PvP if you're playing on high ping or you keep having ping spikes or packet loss. Having a stable connection to the server is bare minimum for PvP. Even the slightest reduction in your ping, as little as 10 ms can make a day and night difference in your PvP performance. This is why I recommend using Gearup Booster, which is like a one-stop solution to all your network problems. You get the lowest ping based on your location, it fixes all packet loss and ping spikes, plus you can easily switch servers if your servers are infested with cheaters, all on just a click of a button. If you want to check if your internet routing is one of the main reasons for your bad performance in PvP, then you can put your internet connection to the test by trying out the free trial of gear up booster it's easy to use and it's safe you're at no risk of getting banned if that's a concern make sure to download gear up booster from the link in description to reduce your ping now i'm sure most of you know this but let's refresh your memory now you cannot take down a pmc if your bullets don't penetrate through their armor you should always check the penetration stats of the ammo that you're going to use Use Tarkov Wiki for this information, link in description. Easy way to check is find the ammo caliber and then look for the color table towards the right side. Green means bullet will penetrate and red means it would be stopped by that level of armor. Keep this link handy, I still refer to it regularly even after 3000 hours in the game. A lot of people make this mistake. They go for the lowest recoil possible on a weapon because they saw some streamer use this build. Low recoil is definitely good but if your weapon has poor ergonomics then you'll have a lot of trouble in PvP. Ergonomics mainly determine how responsive your weapon is. Look at the ADS speed of the same weapon at different ergonomics numbers. If it takes 1 second for you to just ADS then you're dead before you even get a chance to shoot. Especially since patch 14, ergonomics is more important than recoil now. Recoil has been reduced by so much that you don't need to invest a lot in recoil reduction to make guns viable. Try out a weapon with high ergonomics and if you do love it, let me know in the comments below. Now your weapon does not have to be costly, there are always budget options available. Already done a detailed video on best budget weapon for PvP in the game. If you wanna check that out later, link is available in description. Now even since patch 14, the armors may look like they're worthless, but they will still save you a lot of times. So it's worth investing in them. Also with the introduction of armor plates, you can customize your armors according to need. Like creating cheaper high level armors with more front protection, extremely lightweight armors and armors which provide extra protection all around are a few different possibilities. Now this is a video on its own and good for you I have already made it. You can check that out later in the link available in description. 
Your attachments are extremely important in deciding the outcome of a battle. Let's look at these two clips first. What did you notice? In the first clip, since I missed, it led to my death. But in the second clip, the stakes were even higher. It was a four-man team around me and if I missed, I would have definitely died. But I was able to reduce the situation into a 1v2. What was so different in these two situations? Let me explain. I was better geared for a long-range engagement which instantly improved my accuracy. If I had a scope on me in the first situation, then I would have definitely killed the PMC. This does not mean that now you need to start running scopes on FD map. It is totally map dependent. For example, I would prefer to use a 6x or 8x on wood and lighthouse, but I would be happy to use a 4x on customs, but I would always be using a holographic sight on factory. Now it's not just about having range ability. You need to have a laser device, preferably with a torch for close range PVB. The how to use and benefit of this we will look at in the video later let's look at this clip first i was able to tell exactly where he was when i peeked him and he had no clue about me why what did he do wrong now he's not wearing in-game headsets i'm sure everyone watching already knows that headset increase the range from which you can detect footsteps. Now let's look at another clip. Here something similar happened. Here I was able to detect the footsteps of him before he had any clue about me even though he was wearing headsets. Because I was wearing better in-game headsets than him, which had more range for footstep detection. I hope this shows you the importance of investing in better headsets. Now there are a lot of headsets in Tarkov. Each sound a bit different to the other. If you keep switching between the headsets, then you will never get used to the sound in Tarkov. You will not be able to tell the distance of the footsteps are short. So just an advice, start using one headset in the game. For me, I have been only using Excel. They're the second best headsets in the game in terms of footstep audio detection range. Gives me that slight advantage every raid as I'm able to hear and understand enemy positions before them. Injectors will save your life countless times. You're low on HP and still have to hold off an angle to defend your position or something as basic as running out of time and have to extract quickly. An injector case is a one-time investment and it will eventually pay back the worth because it's extra slots in your safe container which help you extract with stems every raid. I usually keep two propitols because it's the most useful stem to heal back, one ETG which is the last resort to heal back quickly, one stem to stop all bleeds, one running stem and one weight stem. I keep three slots empty for the stems that I find in raid for making extra profit. I'm not going to talk about what fixes what. I'm sure anyone watching a PvP guide already knows that. What I want to talk about is which kit to use and why. Now this information is not available inside the game, so most of the player base has no idea about it. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you'll find out that each of these kits have a max heal per use, which is less than 70 for AI2, CAR, AFAC and IFAC. But this number for Saleva is 85. Now why this number is so important for PvP? The thorax health of your character is 85. When you're fighting say someone with a DMR or a sniper, most of the bullet of these caliber deal from around 70 to 80 damage, unless they are flesh damage rounds, which are low risk to you if you're wearing a decent vest. Now if you're using anything except Salevas, you'll have to heal twice to get full health on your thorax, which is not always a possibility. Healing only once leaves you vulnerable to get one tapped on the thorax. On the other hand, if you're using a Saleva, you'll still need two shots on the thorax to die. This will definitely save you against those naked Mosin guys. 
This wipe strength leveling is extremely slow and if you are like the most of the dark op players still leveling up traders then this tip is extremely important to you. From stash itself consider using light gear so that you are not easily overweight. Also your bag, rig, vest, helmet all have negative effects to your economics and movement speed. So it's always a good idea to opt for a gear which has low or no debuff. You can double click any of these items to check the negative effect they have. The rip meaning how your PMC looks is easily neglected but important at the same time. There are two things. First your face mask and helmet color. Having an extreme color contrast on your face can act as an aim assist to your enemies. If you don't think this matters, try running a few raids with a UNTAR helmet and check how many times you died to headshots. I personally died a lot when I was doing my peacekeeping missions than usual. Try to mix face colors with a body armor or rig color so that it's harder for your enemies to go for headshots. Also this means you should always wear face cover. Now some glasses have a glow effect which can help other players spot you in the dark. Instead of remembering which glasses have this glow effect, I follow this rule. Only 4 glasses are worth in the game in the decreasing order of preference. Batwolf and Condors because they are level 1 eye protection. I have survived head eyes with them so they are totally worth especially because they can ricochet bullets. The other two are Gas Wielder and John B because they have good enough protection from flashes. The second important thing here is your clothing. Again what you want to do here is try to mix the colors with your headgear so it's harder for your enemies to headshot you. Now every little thing mentioned so far requires you to have some rubles in your stash. If you don't have money or find it really hard to make money then check out my guide on how to make easy money on Tarkov after this video. From now on you should have no problem making money and should be rich enough to at least invest in minimum required gear. Now you're prepared well for a raid which brings me to the second chapter. Do enjoy your party. Now you don't want to be this guy, do you? All the investment that you made on gear is a waste if you don't understand how each map works. In this chapter, we learn how to read the minds of other players to help us improve our survival rate. Some fights in Tarkov are unavoidable. Just because you spawn at a location, you're now at an immediate threat from your adjacent spawns. It is important to know where the nearby spawns are and what path do they usually take so that you can anticipate PMCs at specific location at the start of the raid. Just this little info will save your life so many times and will give you free kills. Now you can always open the map on a different monitor and learn the spawns but if you are lazy like me then start learning from your raids. Where are your early raid fight happening and where are other PMCs coming from? Where are you spawning every raid? If you start paying attention to these small little details, your survival rate will automatically start increasing because the most number of fights happen at the start of the raid. If you can survive this phase then you can immediately increase your survival rate by a lot. While you're doing your own thing that is looting, questing, moving around, whatever and you hear gunshots, then take a mental note that there is a possibility of a PMC in this direction. You can also figure out if it's a PvP or a PvE fight happening based on the shots. Mostly PMCs try to tap scavs and they go for full auto when they're up against other players. If you can figure out the weapon, that's a bonus too. Depending on your objective, you can use this information to your advantage. You can use other weapons weakness against it. For example, I saw this 3-man team headed to resort. Now this piece of information is available to me. Now when I had to go resort to do my quest, I was already prepared to fight a 3-man team. Similarly, knowledge about quest can help you understand the objective of other players. Let's look at this clip. Here I spot the other PMC's Ushanka hat and it immediately told me that he's trying to do setup, which means he has a shotgun. Based on that information, I was able to decide the best approach for this fight. Little things like bush sound, metal footsteps, wood footsteps, looting sound give you a lot of information on the positioning of players. Sometimes information like door being open or closed can give you extra information. Let's look at this clip. This is just the start of the raid and the right side door should be closed. Since it's open, it gives me info on high possibility of a PMC in the location. 
so I start clearing angles and saved myself from a free death. Really self-explanatory, but something that we all forget to do all the time. With the amount of playstyles that exist in Tarkov, you never know when somebody is aiming at you and waiting for the right opportunity to shoot you down. So it's always a good idea to move cover to cover if you're moving in open ground. This will save you a lot of time if not always. Now if you're not on painkiller 100% of the time in your raids, then you're playing at a huge disadvantage. Especially since patch 14 the painkiller effect has been nerfed and it's not at all annoying to be on painkiller anymore. The cheapest painkiller Vaseline is just 20k on flea. It has 6 uses which last around 30 minutes. You should be completing one every raid. Imagine being this guy and maybe he learned the importance of painkiller the hard way so that you don't have to. Now sound is not the only way to detect the direction of enemy. Just by looking at a dead body, you can decode the direction of a player. Let me explain you with an example. Here in first situation, I shoot a PMC on his back while he's also fighting another scav. Can you decode who killed the PMC by looking at the position of the body? I'll give you 5 seconds. Since the PMC legs are towards me, that means the final shot was mine. You can confirm this by looking at the dog tag. Let's look at another example. The scav just died, now the shot was far enough that it was not audible. Now decode the direction of the player by looking at the dead body of the scav. You have 5 seconds. Now again you are looking where the legs are pointing at. It points towards the hill that means there's a PMC there. How can you use this? Say one of your teammate died and you have no idea where the shot came from. You can quickly look at your friend's body to figure out the direction of the shooter. Or let's just say there was a recent PvP and now you can only see a body. You can use this information to give you an idea where the alive player might be ratting. This is where things start to get really intense. Now you know the fight is about to happen in the next few seconds. In this chapter we will learn what you can do in this situation so that the tides of the battle turn in your favor. Most of the taco fights you can win with just correct cross hair placement. Now this is as easy as clicking on this PC on your computer. I don't think you need aim for this. When you hear the enemy behind say a cover, your aim should be at the head level height and at the most obvious angle that you think he's going to peek from. If you know he's running then you can keep your aim at a slight distance from the peaking angle which will compensate for your reaction time. All you need to do is click as soon as you see him. While you are moving around indoors, it is important that you clear angles. People do like to rat in corners and this habit will go a long way in improving your survival rate. Now you don't have to slow down to clear every angle, so what you should be doing is be ready to hip fire at the most obvious place somebody can be sitting at. Use your shoulder transition to clear right side for a slight advantage. In this clip, he closed all the doors so I let my guard down and you can see I'm not ready to hip fire at the most obvious place somebody could be and this caused me to die here. A lot of time you will be in situation where you know there is a guy but you don't have enough information exactly where he is. This puts you in a disadvantage. While the other guy is ready to fire as soon as you peek from that one obvious angle, on the other hand you have to locate him and shoot back. This is where information gathering comes into picture. The first way is circle strafing. Since your PMC can't instantly change direction, because of the momentum, the next best thing is moving your PMC in a circle and exposing just a little bit more every time. This allows you to clear every angle one by one and it is less risky than just moving out in the open without any information. The second way is sprinting. Generally applicable in closed spaces like doors, what you want to do is run while using free look to try to spot the enemy. Here you are risking just a little bit to get that big information. Third way is bunny hop, generally applicable in large corridor where you are obviously dead if you try to sprint across. What you do is jump in and jump out the same way you came. This movement is extremely hard to follow for your enemies. 
The fourth way is using grenades. Again, this is situational but a really handy tool. As most of the players will move back into cover and this little sound is sometimes all the information you need to decide your play. Sometimes the best way to get information is do nothing. Every little thing that you do in Tarkov makes some sound. So if someone is holding an angle, he has to let go at some point because he's using stamina. So maybe if you wait, you'll get that little information that you need to confirm his position. Having that one extra piece of information can drastically change the outcome of the fight. Really important tip, this is not Call of Duty. Once you take out your nade, the sound is audible to nearby PMCs and at this time you're totally vulnerable. If you have the mentality to kill PMCs using the nade, then drop that thought unless you're using impact nades. In Tarkov, nades are more like tools that are supposed to help you get information rather than get you kills. If you do get kills, then consider it your lucky day. Oh, what? No way. If you see this yellow icon, that means your PMC is overweight. The more weight your PMC has, the slower he will move. And you'll also suffer high ergonomics penalty. Both of these things directly impact our PvP capabilities. The quickest way to fix this is dropping your bag. Do note that when you drop your bag, the sound is audible to nearby PMCs. My bag is gone. No! What does it mean to control fights in Tarkov? It means that when the shooting begins, you're the one with the advantage. So the fight is happening on your terms and not the other guys. If you can make sure that's the case, you're always winning more fights. So how do we dominate this control in PvP? There could be multiple ways from something as simple as holding a push to baiting movement. When you're say holding an angle and the other player has only one obvious angle to peek from, then you are at an advantage as you're ready to fire and he has to locate you, then aim and then shoot. Let's say the situation is reversed. Now you have to push the other guy and he's holding an angle. Then you can bait movement using a grenade. This could be anything like a bait heal or pulling out a grenade or reloading. Now control also means that you don't give away your advantage. In this clip, I don't allow a shotgun player to close the distance and I'm always peeking from cover. Similar situation but here I show control by using cover to close the distance as the other guy is using a sniper and I have more advantage if I close the distance. So always think about what can your advantage be. If you don't have an advantage, how can you create an advantage? Like you can bait some shots and you can push when the other guy has to reload. Tarkov is a realistic game and just like real life the possibilities to outplay are near infinite if you can just figure out a way. Let's look at how to make opportunities from thin air and escape from Tarkov. One of the most important and will take time to get used to tip. In Tarkov, unlike other games, you don't have a crosshair while hip firing. But hip firing is still extremely strong. The reason for that is the movement speed of your PMC while hip firing is higher as compared to when ADS. So you will dodge more bullets if you start using hip firing in close range. Also hip fire is quite accurate especially if you're using a tactical device on your weapon. So bring this into practice and your close range win rate will definitely increase by a lot. If you expose less of your body to the enemy, it is obvious that you will start winning more fights. Instead of wide peeking, try to hold narrow angles which are harder to hit. Sometimes you'll die to headshots, but in the long run, you'll start winning more fights. Now since patch 14, we have got shoulder transition. If you're not using shoulder transition in your PvP, then you're playing at a huge disadvantage. Objective during each peak is exposing as less as possible. And using shoulder transition does exactly that. Even when you're not peeking and going for a wide swing, then also go for shoulder transition because it allows your gun to go out a split second earlier. Which might be the little difference between you winning or losing the fight. 
an obvious tip if you keep peeking the same angle and the other guy has a little game sense then you'll definitely lose all he has to do is aim where he already knows you're going to peek from and click you can always use crouch in the second peek to force the other guy to move his aim slightly which gives you a few extra milliseconds or you can try left hand peek using the shoulder swap try to be creative find unique angles that will throw off your opponents and you will definitely have a higher chance of winning fights When you're healing or you have a nade in your hand, you can press tab and instantly reload your mag just like that. Abuse this bug to heal and reload at the same time during intense situations. Sometimes you both F up and you have to reload. Rare but happens all the time scenario. The one who reloads quickly wins. So a guarantee win here could be using quick reload, which is faster because it throws the current mag. Tip here is to set your reload on R and quick reload on Alt plus R so that even when you do a normal reload, there is no delay because game is not waiting for that quick reload. Using lasers is definitely going to improve your hipfire accuracy. Also since Tarkov does not have any crosshair on hipfire, lasers are a blessing. But flashlights are absolutely broken, especially indoors. They are so bright that they can make the opponent miss a few bullets and that is sometimes what you need in order to win fights. Try to turn on flashlight at the moment you peek instead of keeping it on the whole fight. This creates a surprise which the other guy is not prepared for and makes it harder for the opponent to be able to track you quickly. A bug that you can abuse is, when you're running and if you ADS instantly, your PMC does not suffer any ergonomics penalty. So your ADS is extremely quick. You can combine this with what we discussed in the peaking different angles every time. Now if you don't have a lot of options to peek from, then you can run out of cover and quickly ADS to throw people off. We're expecting you to peek from the same angle again. There are a lot of innovative uses of grenades, especially in a game where sound is so important and grenades are very loud. In this clip, I used a grenade sound to mask the sound of the door opening and my opponent have no idea that I can push from another angle, which gives me a free kill. You can also try to mask your own footsteps if you're pushing or retreating by using grenade sound. You can somewhat mask the sound of pulling out a nade if you're using a voice line. Also, you can mask the sound of the second nade in the explosion of the first nade. This can be seen in this clip. I was able to secure a kill using two nades. Learn all playstyles. You should be able to rat, you should be able to W key or a mix of both, which is a passive aggressive playstyle. If you're getting free kills by doing nothing, take it. Because why not? If you have to be aggressive, say the other guy is low and you feel you'll get the win, then go for it. Sometimes closing up the distance and pushing is the key to win. When say your opponent is using a sniper or a DMR, the ability to transition from one playstyle to another based on the needs of the situation is the difference between a talk of Chad and a Timmy. Always W will definitely not give you the best survival rate. You have to understand the need of the situation and fine tune your playstyle according to it. Big teams are not that strong in Tarkov. The four golden rules of fighting big teams now the disadvantage when you are in a big group is that you don't get a lot of sound information because you are always overwhelmed by the teammates footstep. Also big teams are fearless, they move around like they own the place. Majority of the time you will be able to spot them or hear them before they notice you. Now the first golden rule is when you initiate you should secure a kill. Try to be patient if required. If opportunity does not present itself then don't rush it. Now another bonus advantage you can give yourself is try to kill the biggest chat in the group first. And that is what maximizes your survival chance. Now once you have initiated and lowered their numbers, what you want to do is convert the whole situation into multiple 1v1s. How do you do that? Use cover and peek one PMC at a time. The more time you give them, the more information gets shared between the teammates and the more aware they become about the situation. Try to be quick after you have initiated. The third golden rule is do not get boxed in a corner. Big teams can always run you down because of the sheer number advantage if you keep giving them room to push you. The last and the fourth golden rule is flank. 
keep changing your positions if you are able to because if you flank then you can sometimes initiate twice that is like a free shot at reducing the numbers and improving your odds at winning the fight. Sometimes you can choose to back off in a fight, not always you're forced to participate. If at some point you realize the odds are totally against you and you can back off, then do it. In this situation, I couldn't spot him even after multiple tries and I was eventually gonna die if I kept doing that. So the best option was to leave. Now the golden rule of Tarkov there is always one more. After you have killed an PMC, play like there's going to be another teammate. Clear the area before you start looting. Look around, be careful. It takes time to improve, but at least with the help of this video, now you know what you need to work on. Now the only thing you need to do is not give up. Now all these tips are basically useless if you don't apply them. It is not an easy task to maintain your cool, especially when the PvP and Tarkov can get so intense. The only way to apply these learning is to train your mind so that you start making these decisions subconsciously. You start capitalizing these little mistakes of your enemies into opportunities that will win you fights. How do we learn to do this fast? We play Factory. That is the best map in Tarkov, no bullshit, has a total of 6 PMCs including you. So what you need to do is spam factory, try to win PvP against the 5 other players using the PvP arsenal that has been provided to you in this video. You don't even have to burn a lot of rubles to do this. Run the build from this video and try Yule rig and you're good to go. Keep repeating forever. If you have any questions, you can ask me directly. I stream almost every day on Twitch. And if you still need more help with Tarkov, you can take coaching from me. You all know that Tarkov visibility indoors is extremely bad. And sometimes this could be the reason you're losing PvP. There's not a lot you can do if you cannot spot the other guy. I have got the best Tarkov settings on earth. You have no idea what you're missing. And there's another thing that you're missing. And that is using the correct sound settings which actually has a bug. I mean feature that helps you listen to other PMC's footsteps better. Click on this link on your screen now to fix your visibility and sound.